Pygal Poker is a variation of Pygal Tiles, using a 53 card deck in place of the tiles, which also look like dominoes. It was invented in 1985 by Sam Tarosian, who got some bad legal advice and never patented his game. Because of that, there was nothing he could do when competitors started using his game without paying him a single cent, a mistake which cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Lesson learned, if you invent something, patent it. Now, onto the table layout. It may look a little confusing at first, but it's really quite simple. The bank is located in front of the dealer, and this rack is where all of the house checks are situated. In front of the bank is where the dealer arranges their cards. The discard rack is where all of the unused cards are placed. The round betting circle is where you place your main bet and the fortune bonus can be found to the right of that. The horizontal shaped rectangle with the L in the center is where the player places their two card low hand. The vertical shaped rectangle with the H in the center is where the players place their five card high hand. This game can have up to six players at a time. Like I said before, the dealer will use a deck consisting of 53 cards, and no, that wasn't a mistake. The deck will be a normal 52 card deck, except it'll have a joker added to the mix. This joker can act as a wild card and can be used to complete any kind of straight or flush. When the joker is used to complete a flush, it will represent the highest value card that is not already held in that hand. If the joker card cannot complete any straights or flushes, then it turns into an ace. Because this game follows the basic poker concept, it also has the same poker hand rankings as normal poker, with the only exception being that in some casinos, the second highest straight is an ace, two, three, four, five. The house edge in Pygal Poker depends on whether you're banking or not. If you are banking and you are playing by the house way, then you are essentially playing with no house edge. However, if you are not banking, then the house edge is about 2.9%. If the casino allows co-banking, then the house edge comes out to about 1.4%. When playing Pygal Poker, the object of the game is to form two winning poker hands from the seven cards that were dealt. In order to win their wager, the player must win both of their hands against the dealer. If they win, they'll get paid one to one, but they'll have to pay a 5% commission. If the player loses both of their hands, then they lose their wager. If the player wins one hand and loses one hand, then it is a push and no money is exchanged. The player is only playing against the dealer, who is acting as the banker, and is not playing against the other players. To start off this game, the player will determine how much they want to bet. The bet must be in between the table minimum and maximum. If the player is on a fortune pie gal table, then they have the option of making a side bet. Once the cards have been dealt out, the player cannot change their bet. Once all of the players have finished making their bets, the dealer will hit a button on their shuffle machine and the machine will spit out a pile of seven cards. At the same time, the random number generator located in the middle of the table will display a number that will help the dealer determine which spot will get the first set of cards. Each seat is assigned a number starting from one and ending with seven. The banker will always start as one and then the counting will continue counterclockwise to determine the remaining numbers. Each spot is dealt a hand regardless of how many players are at the table. Once all of the cards have been distributed, the players are now allowed to look at their hands, as the dealer will go back and pick up the cards from any unoccupied moneyless player positions and place them in the discard rack. As the dealer, remember to keep watch, because once the number has been picked and the first set of cards is out, the player is not allowed to touch or alter their bet. Out of the seven cards that the player receives, they will need to arrange two separate poker hands by determining their best five card hand and their second best two card hand. The five card hand is also known as your high hand, 
or backhand, since these five cards will contain your highest ranking hand, such as the straight, two pair, and so on. The two card hand is also known as your low hand, or front hand, since these two cards will contain your second highest ranking hand, such as a jack seven, or a pair of nines. The poker hand rankings for this game are the same as a normal poker game. When the player decides which hand to play where, they must remember that the poker ranking for the high hand must be higher than the poker ranking for the low hand in order to qualify. If it doesn't and the low hand is higher than the high hand, then that hand is fouled and the wager is automatically lost. A foul will occur if the player sets their hand incorrectly, and this will always result in a lost wager. For example, if the player places three cards in the low hand and four cards in the high hand, then the hand is fouled and the bet is lost. Thanks to corporate reasoning and the house edge, this rule does not apply to the banker or the dealer. If the banker or dealer fouls a hand, then the hand will be reset in the correct way and the game will continue as normal. Some casinos will want you to call over the foreman and notify him of the situation before resetting your hand. One of the rules they carried over from poker is that the players have the option to fold their hand. If the player wishes to surrender their hand, they will either push their cards under the bet and towards the dealer, or they'll throw their cards at the dealer. When seeing this, the dealer will collect the player's bet and lock it up in the rack. Each player is responsible for setting their hand, and no one except the dealer is allowed to touch their cards. If the player is unsure of how to set their hand, then they can ask for assistance from the dealer. As the dealer, you are only allowed to set the hand according to the house way, and you cannot deviate from this in any way. Once the player is satisfied with their choice of hands, they will lay their cards down in their designated areas. Then, the dealer will flip over and expose their cards. Once the cards are exposed, the players are not allowed to touch their cards. The first thing that the dealer will do when they turn over their cards is rank their hand. This means that they will take the cards and set them up from highest to lowest, from left to right. This is a good procedure to follow because it makes it less likely to miss any poker rankings. The dealer has no choice of how the hand is set because the casino requires that it's set the houseway. The term houseway means that it is a predetermined setting of the dealer's hands depending on which cards they have received. Remember that the houseway can and does vary from casino to casino. Once the dealer has finished setting their cards, they will now compare their hand to the player's hand to determine who the winner is. Starting from the right hand side and going left, the dealer will expose the player's high hand, spreading all five cards far enough that the cameras can see them clearly. The dealer will examine both hands to see which one holds the higher ranking. After that, the dealer will flip over and spread the player's low hand, also determining which hand has the higher ranking. When spreading the cards, it is very important that the cameras can see everything clearly. When comparing the dealer's high hand with the player's high hand, whoever has the highest ranking wins the hand. The same is done for the low hand. If the player's cards outrank the dealer's on both the high hand and the low hand, then the player wins the wager and the bet is paid even money minus a 5% commission. If the player wins a hand and loses a hand, then the wager is pushed and no money is exchanged. One of the main attractions of Pai Gao Poker is that there are a lot of pushes, so the player's money lasts a lot longer than if they were playing a game like Blackjack. If the player loses both the high hand and the low hand, then they lose their wager. There will be times when the player and the dealer will have exactly the same hand, and when all of the cards match, this is known as a copy hand, and the banker will always win if there is a copy hand. When the dealer completes the take and pay procedure, they will always pay the primary Pi Gal poker bet first, followed by the fortune bonus. 
Then they'll pay any envy bonuses that might qualify before going to the dragon hand. All winning wagers are paid even money minus a 5% commission. Some houses will want you to place the lost bet in the rack while other houses will want you to place it in a designated area on the center of the table and then place it in the rack after all the lost bets have been taken. This is for security reasons, as well as, just in case, there is a dispute and then the dealer will know exactly which bet belongs to what player. One of the rules they carried over from poker is that the player has the option to fold their hand. If the player wishes to surrender their hand, either before or after the dealer has revealed their cards, the player will either push their cards under the bet and towards the dealer, or they will throw their cards towards the dealer. When seeing this, the first thing the dealer will do is collect the player's bet and lock it up in the rack. Then the dealer will spread the cards face down, verifying that there are seven there before placing them in the discard rack. Because each casino is different, you might have side bets and bonus bets on your layout that looks different from this one. Don't worry, just make sure you get a copy of your house rules so that way you won't be confused when doing the take and pay procedure when you're on a live game. And if you have any questions, you can always ask your floorman. Also, different casinos follow different procedures when it comes to the take and pay procedure. But these are the two methods that are normally followed. The first method is the pay-as-you-go system, which is pretty straightforward. The dealer will start from the right-hand side and going left, take or pay the wager depending on the player's cards. As soon as the wager and commission are taken care of, the dealer will place the player's cards into the discard rack and proceed to the next hand. The second method is a bit more involved since the dealer's actions are going to depend on whether the player wins, loses, or pushes. The dealer will start from the right-hand side and go left. If the player loses, the wager will be taken and the cards will be put in the discard rack. If the player pushes, the dealer will pat the table, indicating to the cameras that it is a push, and then place the cards in the discard rack. And if the player wins, the bet will be left alone and the cards will be left facing up until all of the other hands have been determined. Keep in mind that if you have a full table of winners, the cards will need to be spread far enough that the cameras can see them, but not far enough that they get mixed up with their neighbor's cards. Don't be sloppy. You don't want to piss off a player by giving him his neighbor's crappy cards. When everyone's hand is resolved, the dealer will start from the right-hand side and go left when paying the player's wager, minus the 5% commission. Make sure to put the cards in the discard rack after each individual bet has been paid. Winning bets are charged a 5% commission, which will be collected immediately by the dealer. This means that for every $5 the player wins, they must pay a 25 cent commission. When calculating the math for commission, the dealer has two options. The first option is to take 10% of the bet and divide it by two. The second option is to memorize the basic chart and add the commission as you go. So, if you can remember that every $5 bets owes a 25 cent commission, every $20 bet owes a dollar commission, and every $100 bet owes a $5 commission, then you should be good to go. Did you notice on the chart that both the $1 and $5 bet is charged the same commission of 25 cents? The reason why is because commissions are paid to the nearest quarter. Another word for this is breakage, which means the amount is either rounded up or down in the casino's favor. Breakage also has a secondary meaning to it, which is a policy casinos use to increase their profits by using math against an unsuspecting player. An example of breakage is if the player bets $18, you can't really ask them for a 90 cent commission, so this is when breakage applies. If the player has a bet between $1 and $4, then the dealer will round up to the nearest $5 and charge them a 25 cent commission. All players with winning bets are responsible for their own commissions. 
Normally, the dealer will just take the commission out of the player's winning bet, but if the player has the coinage, then they may elect to pay the commission themselves instead. If that happens, then all winning payoffs must be sized into the bet and proven before any commission is collected. Banker is just a title given to a position, and it can be either a dealer or a player. When the player takes on the role as the banker, they're called a player banker, and at the same time, the house will act as a player, even though the dealer will still handle all of the cards and checks. The reason why someone would want to play as the banker is because the rules are slanted in favor towards the banker. So when playing as the banker, the player is basically playing with zero house edge. At the very beginning, the house will start off the round as banker. Once the dealer has banked a hand, the banker position will rotate around the table, starting from the dealer's right hand side and going left. A banker button is placed in front of the betting circle to indicate who is banking. And because every casino is different, there are some casinos that will want the dealer to place the banker button inside the betting circle. In these cases, the player banker's wager does not have to be inside the betting circle, as long as the player has sufficient funds. Each player has the option to bank a hand or pass up the turn, and players are only allowed to bank one hand per rotation. The banker button will always be in rotation going back and forth between the players and the dealer. If there are no players who want to bank, then the dealer will automatically be the banker until there is a player who requests to bank. Every casino is different, but in Las Vegas, it's okay for the player to bank if it's only themselves and the dealer at the table. If a player wants to bank a hand, then they must have wagered on the previous hand before they can qualify as banker. And the reason why the amount the player wagered mattered is because both the player and the dealer must wager that same amount when the player is banking. Another thing the player must have to qualify for banker is enough currency to cover all of the player's bets on the table. This is because all of the other players, plus the dealer, are now playing against the player banker. And the player banker must have enough money to cover all of those bets. If there is any question of the player banker's ability to cover all bets, call over the floor. The player, acting as the banker, must bank on the same spot as their previous wager. If the player had previously bet on two spots, then the spot with the very last wager played will be both the spot and the wager used for banking. After all of the bets have been placed, the dealer will lay out their wager last by placing it on the center of the table in front of the rack. If the table has a random number generator, then card placement will be determined by that. But if the table uses dice, then the player banker will be the one to shake up the cup and expose the dice. When counting spots to determine who will get the first hand, Make sure to start with the player banker, since the banker spot is always number one, and then continue counterclockwise. After the dealer gives himself a hand, he will place the house bet on top of the cards. All of the other players on the table, except the player banker and the dealer, will set their hand first. When everyone is finished, the player banker is allowed to set their cards. Only when the player banker is finished ranking their cards is the dealer finally allowed to set his hand. This is a good time to remind you that unlike players, both the house and the player banker cannot foul a hand. If a hand is set wrong by the player banker, then the house will take control of the hand and reset it the house way. If the dealer has to reset the hand, then the player banker is still financially responsible for the outcome of all the other hands. When the dealer has finished setting his hand, he will flip over the player banker's cards first, compare them with each other, and then take or pay the bets accordingly. If the player banker beats the dealer's hand, then the dealer will leave their wager up on the center of the table, and this is now the beginning of the player banker's bankroll. If the player banker loses, then they will have to pay the wager, and the dealer will take the checks and verify that it is the same amount 
before locking them up in the rack. The dealer will place the house's cards in the discard rack before snatching up the player banker's cards and placing them in front of the dealer. Now that the player banker's cards are in front of the dealer, he will proceed as normal. Starting from the right-hand side and going left, the dealer will compare the player banker's cards with the player's cards, and if the hand is a tie, the bet is pushed and no money is exchanged. If the player loses, then the money is taken and placed in the player banker's bankroll, located at the center of the table. If the player wins, then the dealer will pay them from the bankroll minus a 5% commission, going to the house. If there is no money in the bankroll, then the player banker will give the dealer the correct amount of money needed to pay the bet. At the end of the round, the remaining bankroll will be given to the player banker minus a 5% commission on the winnings. Every casino is different, but in some casinos, when the player banks a hand, they will have the option of requesting that the dealer co-bank with them. Co-banking means that the house will bankroll as partner for 50% of the declared player's bet. The player banker's hand will be set the house way by the house dealer, which means that the dealer will not receive a hand. At a number of casinos, the player banker will have the option to ask the dealer to sit out, which means that the house will not place a wager or play a hand. Now, I know what you dealers out there are thinking. This doesn't mean that it's a good time for the dealer to go take a smoke break, a coffee break, or any other kind of break. The dealer is still responsible for staying at the table, dealing the cards, and collecting the 5% commission. At other casinos, the player banker can ask the dealer to bet an amount less than the player banker's previous wager. In any case, the house minimum and maximum will always apply between the player banker and all of the other players. The dragon hand is a side bet that allows you to play an additional hand, but only one player can play at a time. The button for the dragon hand rotates around the table so that way everyone has the option of having a turn. The wager for the dragon hand must be exactly the same amount as the player's original Pi Gal poker bet. When the cards are dealt out to the players, the first available hand that is sitting on an empty spot will be the dragon hand. The dealer will identify this as the dragon hand by placing a dragon button on top of the cards. After all the cards have been distributed, the dealer will pick up the hands from any unoccupied spots, except the dragon hand, and place them in the discard rack. The dragon hand and the button will then be picked up by the dealer and offered to the next player sitting counterclockwise to the last person who played the dragon hand. If the player refuses to play the dragon hand, then it will be offered to the next player on the left until all of the players have been given the choice to play the hand. When moving the dragon hand, make sure to lift the cards no more than an inch off the table. Any more than that and the dragon will break free from its magic chains and take flight, leaving the dealer scrambling to find a new dragon hand button. If no players accept the dragon hand, then it will be placed in the discard rack. The dragon hand rotation will continue until a player decides that they want to play it. When that happens, the dealer will wait for the player to finish setting their original hand and then they will place the dragon button on top of the player's original cards before placing the dragon hand to the left of the player's original hand. Some casinos will want you to wait until all of the players have finished setting their hand before giving the dragon hand to the appropriate player make sure you know your house rules. When the player is done setting their hand, they will lay it to the right of their original bet in the same manner that they laid their first hand. The reason why is because when the dealer completes the take and pay procedure, they will start from the dealer's right hand side and go left. This makes it possible for the dealer to check the player's original hand first and the dragon hand second. The dealer must not reveal the dragon hand before the original hand. If the player is banking, then they're not allowed to play the dragon hand or any additional side bets. 
if the dealer forgets to offer the dragon hand to the player and instead places it in the discard rack, then it will automatically become a dead hand. Okay, not dead in the literal sense, don't be scared. But a dead hand is a hand that no longer qualifies as a playable hand. Fortune Pi Gal Poker is identical to Pi Gal Poker, but with an additional bonus wager. It's mandatory that the player have money on a normal Pi Gal Poker bet if they wish to play the fortune bonus. They cannot play the bonus by itself. The player can bet any amount they want on the bonus. It doesn't have to be the same amount as their original wager. The minimum a player can bet is $1 while the maximum can be either $50 or $100, depending on the house. In order to win this bonus, the player must have a qualifying five-card poker hand out of all seven cards that were dealt. It doesn't matter how the player sets their hand. If they qualify, they'll still receive their winnings. A list of the fortune bonus payouts will be posted either on the layout or on a sign. If you see Royal Match on the list, this was referring to a king and a queen with the same suit located in the low hand. No fortune bonus wagers are allowed on a dragon hand. And if the player wants to tip the dealer on a fortune bonus bet, be aware that some casinos have a maximum payout for tipping. Apparently, casinos seem to think it's a good idea not to give their employees too much money. But then, doesn't every corporation think that way? If the player is banking, then they're allowed to make a fortune bonus bet, and the other players are allowed to envy the player banker's hand. But as always, every casino is different, so make sure you know your house rules. Don't worry, the house will always handle the fortune bonus payouts, not the player banker. If the player makes a fortune bonus wager of $5 or more, then that player qualifies for an Envy bonus. All Envy bonus payouts are listed somewhere on the table. The dealer will place a button in front of the fortune bonus wager to show the cameras that it qualifies for the Envy bonus. If the player wins a bonus, make sure to spread the cards out far enough so that the cameras can see them clearly. The dealer will pay the player accordingly, and if the winnings are over $100, alert your floor. If the player doesn't win a bonus, then their bet is taken, but the dealer will make sure to leave the Envy button up. This way, if another player has a qualifying hand, then your Envy bonus will still be recognized and paid. Only at the end of the hand will the dealer make sure to remove all Envy bonus buttons that don't apply anymore. At some casinos, toke wagers do not qualify for the Envy bonus. And if there is a situation where more than one player has a qualifying hand, then all bonuses will be paid accordingly for each qualifying bet. The player cannot envy the dealer's hand or their own, regardless of who's banking. No matter how much the player wishes, begs, or pleads, the house will not pay the player for the dealer's good hand. They are in the business of making money, not losing it. This video is good for both players and dealers. This is good for players if you want to play at home, but you don't have the money to buy a random number generator or a shuffle machine. And it is good for dealers because there will be times when the shuffle machine or the random number generator is broken and you'll have to deal the game manually. Since you have no shuffle machine, shuffle the cards by hand before offering the deck for a cut, just as you would if you were dealing blackjack. If the player is banking, then they have the first option to cut the deck. Take the deck and deal out seven hands of seven cards each, starting from the dealer's left hand side and going right. The dealer should keep the deck as low to the table as possible when dealing out the cards. In order for the cameras to verify that all 53 cards have been used, the dealer will spread out the last remaining four cards face down before being placed in the discard rack. The dealer will then straighten up the stacks, tilting the first hand on the left sideways a bit, and the last hand on the right sideways a bit more. This is supposed to represent a dragon with the lucky head on the left and the unlucky tail on the right.
Normally, this is the time when the random number generator would tell us where to deal the first set of cards. But since we don't have a random number generator, we're going to have to rely on dice instead. Casinos usually don't allow the players to shake the dice, but there is one exception to this rule, and it is when the player is banking. The dealer will shake a dice cup with three dice in it a few times using only one hand. Every casino is different. Some casinos will want you to shake the dice exactly four times, while other casinos will want you to shake it between three and five times. So make sure you know your house rules. If you're playing at home, just use your hand to roll the dice. The dealer will always be the one to uncover the dice cup. Players are not allowed to touch the dice or the dice cup. And if the dice bounce out of the cup or is touched by a player, call over the floorman immediately and inform him of the situation. The floor will inspect the dice before putting it back into action. All bets must be in their betting circle before the dice are uncovered because once the numbers have been exposed, no one can alter their bets. If one of the die lies on top of another die or is cocked sideways, then call out no dice before shaking the cup again. The three dice will be totaled and the numbers shown will determine where the dragon's head or the first set of cards goes. The dealer will announce the total of the dice before delivering the cards. The number on the dice correspond with the placement of the hand. The banker or the dealer will always be position number one. Then starting from the right hand side and going left, the dealer will count the spots up to the dice total, giving each position a specific number. The banker dealer position will always be numbers 1, 8, or 15. Remember, the dealer doesn't need to count every spot starting from number 1. This would take too much time. Instead, the dealer will use the fact that the banker position is always 1, 8, or 15 and count forwards or backwards depending on which number is shown on the dice. After the dealer has delivered the first set of cards to the spot indicated on the dice, they will continue to distribute the hands, moving in a counterclockwise rotation. All betting positions will receive a set of cards regardless of whether there is a player sitting there or not. After all of the hands are distributed and the last four cards proven to the cameras, the dealer will pick up all of the hands that are in unoccupied spots and place them in the discard rack. The dice will remain uncovered and unmoved until all of the hands are dealt with. Then the dealer will cover the dice, shake the cup, and place it to the right of the layout. After that, everyone will continue the board game as normal. Pie Gal Poker is a naturally slow game but it's the dealer's responsibility to keep it moving at a good pace without rushing the players. The only exception to this rule is if you're a break-in dealer and you've just learned how to deal the game. The house doesn't mind if you deal a bit slower because you are double checking to make sure that you set your hand correctly or that you didn't miss any house rankings. This is better than a break-in dealer who is dealing fast but is making a lot of mistakes. When new cards are put into play, the procedure is the same as blackjack. First, the seal on the new box must be broken at the game. Then, the dealer will check both sides of the cards for marks and to verify to the cameras that all of the cards are present and accounted for. The dealer will wash the decks before completing the house shuffle. Every casino is different. Some houses will want you to riffle the single deck once before putting it in the shuffle machine while other casinos will want you to do a quick shuffle. Make sure you know your house rules. If the shuffle machine is broken, then the house will ask you to do a standard house shuffle for a single deck. If the player requests to play a hand other than the one in front of them, then they can, as long as there are no other players playing that hand. Their wager must be on the same betting circle that they received their cards from. Once the cards are dealt, the dealer will move the hand to the spot in front of the player. When the player has finished setting his hand, the dealer will move the cards back to their original spot. There will be times when several players will want to wager on the same betting circle as another player, and this is called backline betting. 
After the primary player has placed his wager, up to four other players may make their bets up to the remaining balance of the table limit. Notify the floor of the multiple bets before proceeding with the hand. The primary player must be seated at the table and it is their decision as to whether or not another player can bet on their hand. They will also have the final say as to how their hand is played. Watch out for trolls who allow backline betting and then purposely play the hand badly just so they can screw around with people. After the hand has won and the multi-bet paid, each player is responsible for their own commission. If the player has multiple poker hand rankings that they can choose from, then they'll want to pick the cards that will give them the best low hand as well as the best high hand. If both the player's cards and the dealer's cards have identical hand rankings, then the winner will be determined by the next highest card. This is also known as the kicker. Continuously check the cards during the course of the game to ensure that they remain unmarked and clean. If there are any marks on the cards, errors, disputes, or anything questionable, call over your floor immediately. Any bonus payoff of $100 or more will need the floor's approval. When closing a game, remember to place the dragon hand button in the rack before putting the lid on and locking it up. Always clap out when touching your body or leaving the table. And if the floor needs to assist a player during a live game, then the dealer should keep an eye on all of the remaining players and make sure they don't cheat. But watch those eyes and make sure they don't linger on one spot for too long. If there is a machine malfunction and anyone on the table gets more or less than seven cards, then all hands are declared dead. The dealer will call over the floor and notify him of the situation before reshuffling. Only the players seated at the table can handle the cards and set their hand. All cards must remain within the parameters of the table and cannot go over the railing. The dealer and the cameras must be able to see all of the cards at all times. So, how does the dealer protect himself from giving bad advice to the player? The dealer should never give his opinion when advising the player on how to set their hand. Because if the hand loses, there's a possibility that the player will blame the dealer for their loss and demand their money back. If the player asks you how to set their hand, then tell them the house way. This alleviates the dealer, hence the house, of any responsibility if the player loses. At least, that's what the casino lawyers told me. Apparently, when the dealer assists a player with their cards, they're supposed to do it after all the remaining players have finished setting their hands. Some dealers like to help the player immediately because this makes the game go faster. Remember, every casino is different, so make sure you know your house rules. If a player requests assistance from another player, then the person with the largest wager should be the first to set their hand. To protect the table from cheaters, the dealer should discourage players from exposing their cards or looking at other players' cards when it is felt that an advantage is being attempted by the player. This includes verbal communication as well. Once the player has set both of their hands and placed them face down in the appropriate areas, they may not touch the cards again. Rechecking or resetting their hands multiple times isn't allowed at most casinos. The dealer should be cautious of players who check their cards often. Watch the players handle their cards and set their hand. Look for any unusual hand movements. Listen to what they have to say and be alert to irregular play or any suspicious behavior. If you see anything that doesn't look normal, then make sure you notify your foreman the first chance you get. This doesn't mean that you should loudly call out to the floor across the pit and scream that you think one of your players is cheating. Instead, on your next break, go to the podium and speak to the floor discreetly. As we go through this list, you'll probably notice a few differences between Pai Gal Poker and the normal poker hand rankings. The first being the five of a kind, because you'd never see that at a normal poker table. Since Pai Gal Poker uses a joker card, 
there is a small chance that the player will get four aces and the joker. And that is the first hand ranking that we are going to add to this list. This is a list of which hands beat what. Five of a kind is a top, which means it beats all of these other hands. Next on the list is the royal flush. A lot of people will recognize this because it is the highest ranking hand in poker. A royal flush is an ace, king, queen, jack, and ten of all the same suit. The only hand that can beat a royal flush is a five of a kind. Otherwise, the royal flush beats all other rankings. A royal flush is considered to be the highest ranking straight flush, and that is the next ranking on our list. A straight flush will lose against a royal flush and anything higher, but it will win against a four of a kind and anything lower. A straight flush is when all five cards are in sequence and also have the same suit. For example, a four, five, six, seven, and eight of hearts. A four of a kind is next on the list, and this ranking consists of four cards of equal value. For example, a nine of hearts, a nine of diamonds, a nine of clubs, and a nine of spades. The four of a kind will lose to a straight flush or higher, but it will win against a full house or lower. Full house is... <sighs> no. If you want the poker rankings for a full house, then combine a three of a kind and a pair together. For example, a full house would be a seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, and a seven of spades, along with a nine of spades and a nine of hearts. A full house will lose against a straight flush or higher, but it will win against a flush or lower. A flush is next, and this hand consists of five cards with all of the same suit, but in random order. For example, all diamonds or all spades. A flush will lose against a full house or higher, but it will win against a straight or lower. A straight is when all of the cards are in sequence, but they have different suits. For example, a six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. A straight will lose against a flush or higher, but it will win against a three of a kind or lower. Here is another difference between pie gal poker and normal poker. See, normally in poker, the second highest straight is a king, queen, jack, ten, and nine. But in pie gal poker, the second highest straight is an ace, two, three, four, five. Next on the list is a three of a kind, and this is when you have three cards of equal value. For example, if you have three jacks or three sevens. A three of a kind will lose against a straight or higher, and it will win against two pair or lower. Two pair is just how it sounds. You have two pairs. A pair are two cards of the same value. For example, a pair of fives. And if you added a pair of eights, then you would have two pair. Two pair will lose against a three of a kind or higher, and it will win against a pair or lower. A pair will lose against two pair or higher, and it will win against high card. High card is any hand with no rank or value. So when referring to a high card hand, you always say the highest ranked card first, followed by the word high. For example, a queen, 10, nine, seven, five, three, two, all in different suits, would be a queen high pie gal. Pi gal is just another way to describe a non-ranking hand. When you arrange your cards so they have the best house edge, this is known as the house way. And these are the rules that the casinos follow to give themselves the best advantage. The term house way means that it is a predetermined setting of the casino's hand depending on which cards they have received. The dealer must always set their hand according to the house way. If you forget the house way, or if you have a question on how to set your hand, feel free to ask the dealer or call over your floor and ask for advice. Starting from the lowest ranked hand, we're gonna go through each poker ranking and describe the best way to set each hand. 
Out of the seven cards you were dealt, if you can't form a ranking hand, then this is known as a high card. And your best option is to place your highest ranking card in the high hand and the second and third highest ranking cards in the low hand. Next on the list is a pair. Always place the pair in the high hand and the next two highest ranking cards in the low hand. After one pair is two pair. And this is where it gets a little more in depth. But don't worry, we have a rule that will help you out with that. The two pair rule can be broken down like this. If you have a pair of jacks and sixes or anything higher, then always split the pair. If you have a pair of sixes and fives or anything lower, then always keep the two pair together. If you have anything else, then always split the pair. Unless you also have an ace in your hand, then you would keep the two pair together in the high hand and the ace in the low hand. Every casino is different, and some casinos treat their two pair rule differently than others. For example, in some casinos, they'll have you splitting jacks and sevens instead of jacks and sixes. Another deviation is if you have a pair of aces with any other pair, then always split the two. Next on the list is three pair. And if you have three pair, always put your highest pair in the low hand and the other two pair in the high hand. After three pair comes three of a kind. And if you get a three of a kind, then always keep the three of a kind together in the high hand. Except if you have aces. You always split three aces so that a pair is in the high hand and one ace is in the low hand. If you have two three of a kinds, then place the lowest three of a kind in the high hand and split the higher three of a kind so that the low hand has a high pair in it. If there is a three of a kind with two pair, then play the highest pair in the low hand. Next on the list is a straight, followed by a flush, but we're gonna lump them into the same group because they follow the same rules. Some poker hands don't want to follow the rules and want to pretend that they're mavericks, like the famous two-pair game. Well, if you have a straight or a flush, always keep it in the high hand. Unless you have a six or seven card straight, then you would put your highest card in the low hand and the straight or flush in the high hand. If you have a six card straight with the pair at either end, then use the pair in the low hand and the straight in the high hand. The two pair rule must always be followed even if it splits up a straight or a flush. If you have a pair of jacks and sixes or anything higher, then split the pair. If you have a pair of sixes and fives or anything lower, then always keep the two pair together. If there is a pair of aces with any other pair, then always split the pair with the low pair in the low hand and the pair of aces in the high hand. If you have both a straight and a flush in your hand, then play the cards in a way that will give you a jack or better in the low hand. Next on the list is a full house. Always split a full house. Except when the low pair are twos and the hand contains an ace jack or an ace king, depending on the casino. If the full house has an extra pair, then play the highest of the two pair in the low hand. 
After the full house is a four of a kind. If you have a four of a kind of sixes and under, then always keep them together in the high hand. If they're sevens and higher, then always split. Unless you have an ace or any other pair, then keep the four of a kind together and place the ace or the pair in the low hand. If you have a four of a kind with jacks or higher and any other pair, then split the four of a kind so that you have a high pair in your low hand and two pair in your high hand. Unless that pair is sevens or higher, then you would keep the four of a kind together. If you have four aces, then you would split them up. Unless you had a pair with those four aces. If you had a pair of sevens or higher, then you would place the pair in the low hand and the four aces in the high hand. If the pair is sixes or lower, then play the pair of aces in the low hand and the two pair in the high hand. If you have both a four of a kind and a three of a kind, then split the hand up in a way that the highest pair goes in the low hand. Next on the list is a straight flush. And if you have a straight flush, then keep it as the high hand. But for anything else, you would split the straight flush the same as you would a straight. And you can play the straight or the flush over the straight flush if you have an ace or a king to play in the low hand. After the straight flush is a royal flush. If you have a royal flush, always play it in the high hand. Unless there are two pair of tens or higher, then split the hand. Always play the straight or the flush over the royal flush if it means that you'll have a king or higher in your low hand. And at some casinos, it's a jack or higher. Next on the list is a five of a kind, which is five cards of equal value, also known as the impossible hand. Why is it impossible? Well, we are only playing with one deck of cards. So, how does the impossible turn possible? With the joker. Actually, more like the Joker card, since this is the card that can turn into the fifth ace, giving the player five aces. A five of a kind can only occur with aces and no other card. It's a good idea to always split up five aces so that there are two aces in the low hand. Unless, of course, you have a pair of kings. Then you would keep the aces together. 